hello there everyone i hope you are doing great wherever you are watching from in this video i'm going to be going through everything you need to know about making realistic colored pencil drawings including all the materials i use my name is Goju, and if you are new here i make realistic artworks mostly in colored pencils come with me today as i talk about the basics of realistic colored pencil art this is a guide for beginners nice so this video is divided into four parts. In the first part, we are going to be talking about all the materials I use. The second part is going to be about how I select colors accurately for my drawings. In the third part, we are going to be discussing all the relevant techniques I use to achieve realism. And in the final part, I'm going to take you through how I made this exact drawing right here from start to finish based on the techniques I'll be sharing with you. So first off, materials. And of course, you have to talk about colored pencils. There are two basic types of colored pencils depending on their core material. We have those that are oil based like the Faber Castell pencils and those that are wax based. I use wax based pencils most of the time so we'll be talking a lot more about those in this video. I use the Prisma Color and then the Caran Dash Luminance pencils. Let's start off with the Caran Dash Luminance pencils. These are probably the most premium colored pencils you'll find on the market. I mean from the build quality to the vibrant colors they produce. I don't think there are many better colored pencils out there. Definitely one of my favorite pencils. I mainly use them for drawing stuff like the skin because of the smooth effect they produce. They also have a strong core despite being quite creamy so you can basically use them for any type of drawing. I'll be showing you how I use them in subsequent videos so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that. I've used the Prisma Color Premier pencils in about 80% of my drawings. They are the first set of colored pencils I ever bought for realistic drawings and they are amazing as well. They may not have the build quality of the Caran Dash Luminance pencils, but really they do get the job done and I've enjoyed using them over the years. I would recommend though that you get extra black and white colored pencils because you run out of those colors pretty quickly. When it comes to papers, I like to use the Strathmore Bristol series. I have both the smooth and vellum finishes. I also use the paint on series from Clairefontaine. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That's the paper I'll actually be using for our demonstration. It has this beautiful rough texture which I really like. Also, I have the tone grey series from Strathmore which is great if you want to practice your values. If you are just starting out however, I recommend that you get the 300 series Strathmore Bristol papers. In fact, they'll be all you'll ever need. When it comes to selection of the type of finish to use, I would suggest that you use the smooth papers for drawings that do not require a lot of layering. We'll be talking a lot more about layering in a bit. And for those that require a lot of layering, I suggest you use the rough textured papers since they can take a lot of layers without quickly destroying the tooth of the paper. You will need a regular HB pencil for drawing your outlines or sketches. Any sharpener will do. Just make sure your pencils are sharp at all times. I use both the regular and electric sharpeners erasers including a kneaded eraser, ruler to help with your sketches, white gel pen for highlights, brushes for blending and also cleaning your paper. Solvent extremely important for blending and you see why in a bit. Eventually your pencils will get shorter and you will require pencil extenders to still have that good grip on your pencils. A crafting knife is essential when creating details in things such as hair and fur. We'll talk a lot more about those in subsequent videos. Now to the second part. We are going to be talking all about how I select pencils for my drawings. First thing I like to do when I get a new set of colored pencils is to arrange them based on similar colors and then make color swatches of them. This helps me group similar colors so that finding them becomes easier. As you see here, I'm making color swatches on a Strathmore paper, making sure that I group similar colors. So I do two swatches for each pencil, one dark and the other light, side by side. The arrangement of the pencils within the colored pencil sets will always change once you start using them, but they will remain the same obviously on the paper. So what I do is I compare the colors in the reference picture to my swatches and then select appropriate colors based on those that best match the colors in the reference. We are on the third part of the video now and it's all about techniques. All my colored pencil drawings go through four main stages. First, the outline or sketch. Secondly, color selection which we've already spoken about. We'll then talk about layering and blending and then we'll end with details. So the outline, bear in mind we are talking about the techniques I use in general. 
We haven't started the actual drawing I promised in the beginning, that will be coming up shortly. We need to first understand these techniques. I believe the outline is the most important step to making a realistic drawing. It really is the backbone of any realistic drawing. There are many ways of doing it and I have an entire video dedicated to teaching you how to get an accurate sketch or outline every single time. I strongly recommend that you watch it after this video. I'll be putting a link to that video in the description below. Layering and blending. We start with layering. Layering is when you shade colors one on top of the other. I usually start with a single color which serves as the base layer and this color is usually the lightest color in the area being shaded. After this, I shade the other colors on top of it based on what I infer from the reference photo. Now there are a couple of things I want you to see so I'm going to slow this down in a bit. Notice how far my hand is from the tip of the pencil. That is because I want to make sure I layer as lightly as I can. That way, I can easily stack up more colors on top without destroying the tooth of the paper. Also, the pencil tip is kept sharp at all times so as to easily get into the tooth of the paper. In this demonstration, the base layer is a light red and on top of it, I'm layering with a darker red. Another important step in the journey of realistic drawing is blending. There are two basic ways of blending, using a solvent and burnishing. So in the solvent method, I dip the tip of the brush into the solvent I'm using turpentine in this particular demonstration. I then wipe out extra solvent by gently dabbing the brush on a piece of tissue. Gently, I blend from the lightest area of the drawing to the darker areas. One thing to note is that when you use this method of blending, you can always go back and create more layers or create more details on top of the blended area. So this is what it looks like after blending, doing a few layers and then more blending. Now burnishing, or what I also like to call the pressure method. With burnishing, what you do is after you are done layering, you go in with a color that is similar to the ones you've used for layering and then apply pressure moving in circular motions to blend the layers together. Some people use a white colored pencil for this. Some colored pencil sets also include a blender specifically for this purpose. So you keep applying pressure until the entire area is well blended out. This is usually good for human portrait drawings. So I have a demonstration here comparing the pressure or burnishing technique to the solvent technique. They are both useful depending on the type of drawing you are doing. The way I view details is they are those final pieces of the puzzle that really give life to a drawing. And I usually reserve them for last and I think you should too. In the demonstration you see here, the details are in the form of highlights. I do highlights with a white pencil and a white gel pen. The white gel pen is used when I need the highlight to be super bright like you can see in this demonstration. Now let's make use of all the techniques we've spoken about to make a drawing from start to finish. The reference image for this drawing can be found in my free ebook. Link is in the description. Please be sure to check that out. It contains some very useful tips. So step one, the outline or sketch. I'm using the grid method. Once again, I have an entire video on how to draw outline, so be sure to check it out. This is my final impression on how the outline for this drawing should look like and here I'm dabbing off some extra graphite from the sketch to make it as light as possible. On to step 2, color selection. I'm using the Prisma Color Premier pencils for this one. So I compared the colors in the reference to my color swatches and came up with these initial colors. In all, I used about 12 colors. The exact names of the colors I used are all listed in my ebook. Step 3, now we are layering. Same principles as discussed, single color for the base layer, after build up layers with other colors you can see in the reference. Don't forget to like if you are this far into the video already, it really helps the channel. Using the solvent method for blending, always make sure you have enough pigment layered before you blend. If not, you won't get that realistic look we are going for. I like to call this the ugly stage. At this point, the drawing does not really look like the reference, but we need to be patient and believe in the process. Like I said, you can always create more layers on top of previous layers when you use solvents to blend. 
Here I'm layering with black on top of the previous layers. So we are done now and once again we will blend with the solvent. Take note that there will still be some areas of red showing through the black and that is one of the reasons why we use reds for our initial layers in the first place. It is advisable to have brushes of different sizes. You may need to blend some very small areas and in such instances you will require smaller brushes. Now to the details. Here I'm creating highlights along the edge of the upper lip using the white pencil and white gel pen. In areas where I need it to be very bright, I use the white gel pen. So just study the reference photo closely and that will guide your details. So we follow the same steps for the jelly ball, layering, blending and then ending up with details. The teeth are hardly pure white in any image. And that's because of the shadow the mouth itself casts on the teeth. In this image, the teeth had a peach and pink tone to them. So I went through the same process. The only difference I made here is that I blended the initial layers with solvent and the final layers using the burnishing method. You can also blend with a q-tip as you see me doing here. It produces a smooth and beautiful finish. If you are this far into the video, please consider subscribing and turning on post notification. I've got a lot more of such videos in the future. Now to the lower lip. So don't forget the same principles. Layering, blending and then details. I'm now creating details in the lower lip and here the details are in the form of creases. So once again, I look at the positioning of these creases in the reference photo and try to replicate that. You don't need to draw them exactly as you see them in the reference. If you can, that's fine. But uh, usually you will realize that details follow a particular pattern. So you just have to try and replicate the pattern as a whole rather than doing them individually, which can be very difficult. It's like drawing hair, you don't draw them individually, you just look at the general form and replicate it as closely as you can to the reference. So I'm picking up a few highlights as well on the lower lip. So that's the final drawing, but don't leave yet. Please check out my free ebook titled The Basics of Realistic Colored Pencil Art. Link is in the description. As I said, you'll find the reference image for this drawing there so you can download and practice with it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer each and every one of them. Also, let me know what you think about the final drawing. Have a great day.